everybody, I'm Amy. I'm Dan. And we are the Hustle Couple coming at you today with our daily grind. You know what? Grind really does apply today. Of all days. So we come at you every day and we show you the reality of reselling. Yep. And today is just one of those days. Man. We've had, I think, four returns today, and two of them were big. Yeah, two of really, them were really big. really big. Now, we're going to tell you what happened <clears throat> because we're here on the internet sharing, but this is not to dissuade anyone. This day is rare, yes, but it happens. It does, and I, I, I kind of hate the phrase that it's just part of doing business, but unfortunately, it is. So, first first one, which which one should we talk about? Okay, well, we got a return on two coffee makers. Yes. This isn't the first time we've had a coffee maker return. In fact, we get them returned a lot, and we're not going to sell them anymore. Yeah, probably not. I mean, I th more have gotten returned than have stayed with the buyer. So. so, you saw us pack up the big Flavia 500. Mm -hmm. That's one that got a return request, and the buyer said they hooked it up to the plumbed water line, started the machine, and it leaked water everywhere. This could have been user error. We don't know. There was a video of the coffee machine working and brewing a cup of coffee in the listing. Yeah. Uh, you saw us pack it up. It could have been our fault. It could be a scammer. We don't know. Don't know. At the end of the day, when this happens, we don't know. There is something skeptical for me because every coffee maker we get a return on, and it's many, says it leaked water all over my counter. Mm -hmm. To me, I'm like, How, where is this verbiage coming from? Right. It's not like, oh, it doesn't pull water or, oh, it didn't brew. No, it's always that it leaks water on the counter. Yeah, both 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 ones were used, used that basically verbatim, that same phrase. I'm like, is there a dark web <laughs> message board telling people how to get free coffee makers on eBay? Okay, so what we're going to do, we, we handled the return process and all of that. Besides that, going forward, we're just not going to sell coffee makers anymore. Nope, I'm just not going to do it. And that's just an ed educated business decision. If you keep running into the same wall, we could quit eBay and walk away and say, I'm never doing eBay again, which I see a lot of people do. Yeah. No, we're just not going to do coffee. No, no more coffee makers. It's fine. Right. It takes too long to test anyway. That's true. And we have great coffee on our own, so it's fine. Right. Bye. Bye. Not doing it anymore. Not doing it. And we're not going to let us, like, get it. <clears throat> I mean, we had a couple other returns for size and fit and that kind of a thing. And that that's going to happen when you sell clothes. It's just that it all happened in one day. Right. Yeah, and it, like, feel, it's, uh, it feels very, like, it's, it's a hit to your, like, to your morale. You know what I mean? It's like, man... This guy thinks I sold him something broken, and that's just not that's not what we do. That's not why we're not we're, what we're about. No. So, both <sighs> listings had videos, to be honest. They did of them working. Yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> we're gonna move on from this. We are. Uh, we get a lot of questions about how we process and list inventory, yep. and so I'm gonna go through one item with you today and mention two pieces of hardware that we use that are readily available for you and maybe you want to incorporate in your business. There are a million and a half ways to do this. Yeah. So don't just emulate me. Yeah, this is just what works best for us. It right. might You might find that one or two aspects of what we do work really well for you mm -hmm. and you're more than happy, you know, more than go right ahead and adapt whatever you want to adapt. But you don't have to follow what we do if it doesn't work for you. The key to this and to it working for us is that it came out of my brain. <laughs> and I think I, I think that's important. <clears throat> yeah. It didn't come from somebody else. As soon as you start to emulate somebody else and their working style is a little bit different, mm -hmm. you need to pull from here, 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 and here, and then create the perfect concoction for you. Right. So I'm going to give you some of the tricks of my trade, and then hopefully you can make your own trade from them, if that makes sense. It does. Okay. Here we go. Let's go. Okay. I got the glasses on. We're about to get down to business. That's how you know it's serious. It's serious stuff here. So the first piece of hardware I want to address is this. Dang oh. It, dang it, dang it. This is a scanner. And all it is, it's like 20 bucks on Amazon. You can get any scanner. You just have to type in barcode scanner. All it is is like a piece of hardware similar to a mouse or a number keypad. It has a USB and you plug it into your computer. No, you don't have to do anything. You just plug it in and then it recognizes it like a mouse. Like... 
hey, there's something plugged into right. me. Right, it's just a new input device. It's a new input. And I was going to show you. We're going to list this Yahtzee game from my grandfather. All right. And um, it has a barcode. Okay. And I use this just to save time and because it's, like, kind of fun. Right. I like to add the fun back in listing. For sure. So I'm going to show you on Google. I just have the cursor here. Uh-huh. So literally all you do, you just, you plugged the USB from the scanner into your computer and let it install itself and that's it. That, it didn't even install itself. It that's, just, that's all you did. You it's, just like plugging, it in. it's like plugging in a keyboard. Okay. There's okay. nothing to install. Perfect. You just, you you just, just plug it. You just plug it in. Okay. Ho. Okay. Oh. That's all it does. All this machine does, it's very simple. It looks very complicated, but all it does is scan the number from here and put it into here. And then it even like presses enter and searches yeah. for you. Yeah. That's amazing. All right, so, I'm going to zoom in. You want to do that one more time? <laughs> so I it's, mean, I saw it happen, but okay, that was Okay, let's go cool. back. Let's go back. I mean, it looks way more complicated than it is. No, I know, but... Whoa. Right. Amazing. So okay. I use this to list things. Like, we have these Theraworks I'm going to list. Things with barcodes. Yeah. It makes it go much quicker. I don't have to type it in. And then on the UPC field in eBay... Is it, it already pre-filled out? It will also... Well, see here, if I start... Oh, on, you just scan it and it fills it in. Is what you? What, I'm, I'm gonna sure. let you talk. Okay. <laughs> so sometimes I start on Google and then I'll click on an eBay listing and sell similar from that. Okay. But you can also see this one's twenty nine ninety eight. Fine, but I don't get comps this way because I'm like, oh, it's just this one listing. Yeah. So if I click in the field here, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, look at that! All my listings are here. So I really like that tool. I really think it cost $20. And all I did was on Amazon typed in barcode scanner. I don't think you can go wrong with any of the brands. I don't know. I don't endorse any of them. I don't care. I okay. just wanted to scan my barcodes. Right. Okay. So I'm going to look through these. And this is, let's let's do this together because everyone asks how I do comps and all of that. So I'm looking at these listed and they're all like 30, 37, 24. Okay, fine. Ours is pre-owned. Okay, so then I'm gonna to go to solds. Every single time I'm gonna to go to solds and make sure if this thing is selling. So this one sold for 14, this one sold for a best offer and it was brand new. So it doesn't give me too much. This one was pre-owned and went for $61.99. Okay, that's not bad. Sold January 9th, so that's really, really soon. And this one was brand new and went for $69.97. So what this is telling me a, I'm not going to go back to those listeds because those are all going to tank my thing. For right. some reason, this one sold. So I'm going to sell similar from the one that sold high. Yeah. I do it every single time. And then I mark mine. So I'll probably list mine at like, because I don't know if it's unused, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'll probably mark mine at like $59.99. Perfect. And then take a best offer. But now it tells me what it actually will sell for. I'm not going to undercut myself with the listeds. Who cares about them? Because I think there's this idea that if something's priced higher, it's better. And it works. People will buy my listing over theirs. You you see us every day. You see if this Yahtzee sells. Okay, so we go here. Let me zoom back in so people can see what's happening. And look at this, $20 shipping. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to go to sell one like this. Okay. So now, here we go. It creates a draft for me. And I'm going to make sure all of this is what I want to say. Yes, yes, yes. I've already pre-inspected this. I'm going to create a SKU number for our games. We put them on the shelf called 1500. And the UPC is already in here. Had it not been in here, I could put it in there. Wow. Boom. Okay. So that saves me tons of time. Here, I put E dollar sign. And I have made a keyboard shortcut for when I put E dollar sign that it pre-fills for excellent pre-owned condition. Oh, look at that. So when I push the space bar... Boom. Wow. So another day we'll go over how to do that. Time I promise. Save. All time save. Time saves. Then I'm going to go down here, Milton Bradley. I'm checking every single thing to make sure. I'm going very fast, but I'm just making sure there's no weird things here. So I'm going to copy the title. I'm going to put that as the first line here. And I'm making sure the title is good. Vintage 1995. This is not my favorite way to do it. But this one's sold, so I'm not going to mess with it. If it hadn't sold, I would probably move Vintage in 1995 to the middle and start with Yahtzee. Because okay. that's how someone's going to search for it. That makes more sense, yeah. But this one sold. Okay, so I'm not going to... I'm going to do down here. Excellent pre-owned condition. Complete. Again, I just put... I just like to have like a little bit of something. Yep. And then I'm going to price this at what I said. $59.95. I'm going to put on best offer. And then I'm going to ship this with... Well, these are our shipping policies. 
and we need to ship this one standard ground 15 plus local. That's something we made up and we'll go through these in another video. But this is like $15 for us for shipping and I'm gonna edit the shipping cost. And this also lets us go ground and it also lets people come pick it up if they want to. I know that that other guy got $19.99 for his shipping so that's what I'm gonna charge. You can change it for one item. Right. Right there. And in all reality, a board game of I mean, board games usually cost about 20 bucks to ship mm -hmm. because they're a little bit bulky and they don't usually fit into standard size boxes. So the way I did that is I put on our, our pre-formed um, policy and then I put edit shipping costs for this listing only. Okay, great. So very, very few times do we go above $15, but with board games, we've learned that we need to. And I just saw what one sold for, so I'm going to go with that. I promote our things at 1% or 2%. We'll do 1 on this. And then, okay. So then I'm going to go save as draft. Now, here's the part where this comes in. This is our receipt printer. I don't know about any other receipt printers. All I know is that this is a thermal printer that you would use in like a restaurant or a retail shop. It takes three inch receipt paper and it's thermal. So there's no ink. Right. All I know is that the computer recognizes this and any other receipt printer, as far as I can tell, as a, just a regular old printer. You know how you, when you go print, you can go to like your HP or your mm -hmm. whatever, brother printer. You can right. pick your printer. Yep. You can pick this. So when you get it, you install it just like a regular printer. You can use the disc or go to the website, any of these. Right. Okay. These thermal printers. And it's it looks and sounds so much more difficult than it is. It is so easy. So I plug this in via USB to my computer, I installed the driver, and then it's a printer. Literally just like any other printer. It's literally a printer. Okay. So then I opened up Microsoft Word. <laughs> okay. And I created a three, because this is three inch receipt paper. Right. So I created a document, file, new document, that's three inches. Uh huh. And then I made all these text boxes literally in Microsoft Word. Okay. You could do this in paint, you could do it in... PowerPoint, it doesn't matter as long as it's three inches wide. Okay. So then for the item here, I just copy and paste vintage Yahtzee. So we know what it is. The cool. inventory number is going to be um, 1500 Okay. So that tells us where it is. The cost on here, we paid 349 but this was 40% off day because of who we are as people. <laughs> so I'm going to go to calculator. We don't even shop full price at the thrift. No way. And I'm going to go 3.49 <clears throat> minus 40%. So we paid 209 And the star means we did not pay tax on it. And we got this at the St. Vincent de Paul on 1221. Uh, 22. I mean, 22. Oh, oh man, it. 22. <laughs> uh, we try to keep up with when we got stuff. We're not so great at this. Okay. Not so best. Okay. So what I'm going to do, this is a, just a Word doc. Look right. at this, guy's Word, Microsoft Word. Yep. I'm going to push Control P, so like you would for print. Right. Okay. On my... here, you got to select the printer because it's on the... Right. So this is our HP, and we don't want to use that. Right. I just select star TSP143. It's just oh. a printer. Okay. It's a printer <laughs> i know i'm like so, because i get questions all the time like what kind of software do you use what kind of hard i get all these questions yeah. like i'm using some kind of magic yeah proprietary and software. i'm like you guys it's so easy and okay. the the microsoft word the template that we use if you want it from us we will happily email it to you yeah so email just, us at thathustlecouple at gmail.com. Yes. Our email is always down below. And Dan will just fire you. I mean, it, it will have weird information in it, but you just replace it with right. your own. Yeah. Okay. So then I just... Print are you going to watch? Oh, yeah. Are, are am, you zoomed am, in? This, it's the time. I and ready. So I just push print. And I push yes because... Whoa. And it even cuts it for you? It cuts it for us. That is so cool. And then I tape it to the box. So the idea here is we used to use a spreadsheet and I know many of you do and some of you are rolling your eyes like why don't you just use a spreadsheet? <laughs> and I thought about it long and hard today of how to explain it why we don't use a spreadsheet. What's the good answer? I hate spreadsheets. No. That's the great answer. No, no, no. Uh, when stuff sells, we have a habit of not taking it down. And when we go thrifting, we have a habit of hitting like six to eight stores a day. And we put our, subs in the, we put our things in the heater there's no way for us to document all that in a spreadsheet. 
okay. like, yeah, of all right. the goods. Yeah. So basically what we do is just bring goods into our house, and as we're listing them, they get documented here. We don't save them anywhere else. I don't have to go into a spreadsheet. I don't have to find it when it sells. The ticket's just here. We have a stack of tickets every single day that I input into Vendu all this information. And for us, the way that our business works, it makes it so much easier. This cost of inventory is irrelevant because we use average cost of goods, but it helps us to know our business. And it helps us to know, oh, we paid two bucks for that, but it only sold for 20, so maybe we should look into that next time. Okay. It just helps us understand better. Sure. And uh, these tickets make it more accessible for us because we are listing together. So in order for Dan to list something, he would have to go to the spreadsheet, look at what I inputted into the spreadsheet, <laughs> pull it up, insert his information after he takes the pictures, and it, it doesn't... Now he just grabs the ticket. Yeah. He just grabs the ticket. He knows where it goes. Also, our bins are pre-labeled with numbers, so he doesn't have to go into the spreadsheet after he takes photos and find, oh, where is this supposed to go? No, he just looks at the ticket and goes, oh, Amy said it goes in 2733, puts it in there. Right. So it works really, really, really well for us. It also works when we have a return because we can pull the ticket and we're like, ah, this is what it went for. This is, and we put it back into the inventory and we have a stack of return tickets so that we know that that stuff is accounted for. Right. And it's tactile. And I am an artist and Dan's an artist <laughs> and we are touchy feely, tactile people. And it, the first year of reselling was a nightmare for us because we use spreadsheets. We have them. I could show you. I've used every spreadsheet on the face of the earth and every reseller comes out with spreadsheets and that's fine. If you're a spreadsheet person, fantastic. We use tickets and Vendu and it works a hundred percent better for our type of situation. Right. So that's it. You don't have to do this. In fact, I don't know anybody else that does do it. <laughs> I really don't. But if it but works But people for had you, questions and we wanted to give you the answers. We are here for you. And if you have a nitty gritty question, ask it below. I'll address it again. And I'm sure people, as they start to watch these videos, will cover it again yep. each time. Uh, and take what you want from this to help you. Hopefully yeah. it does. I think the scanner was 20 and I think the receipt printer is about 180. Okay. And that's... we've actually found these at thrift stores after the fact. That's true. We have. So yeah. you might find one at the thrift. Yeah. It's pretty great. All right. Let's ship. Let's get it shipped. All right. Here we go. Okay. We call this segment check in with the soaking dirty bunny. Okay. Here Anybody we... who saw yesterday's video saw that this guy went into the cleaning bucket. I'm and turning he's been him. Soaking. Look. Can oh, you wow. tell? He's like super clean. And look at the water beside him. Whoa. Oh, that's nasty. So it's like I said. It's kind of hard to, to discern on the, on the. Okay, well, he's clean and the yes. water's dirty. Yes. Can you tell the water's dirty you, there? Yeah, you can, you can kind of tell. Uh, and I'm going to leave him in here for another 24 hours. This is a 48 hour operation. <laughs> All right. We're going to walk around the corner here and get set up to ship our whopping four sales out. Hey, everybody. We're at the shipping station, and I said four packages, but I actually meant six. Yes. Because we had two on Poshmark. Okay. So we're going to do those first. Uh, hashtag plush on Posh is it's crazy. continuing. Uh, I have no idea. I can't explain it, so I'm not even going to try. All right, I'll do you this. You tell the people. Okay. <laughs> this is the kind of weird crap that we buy. I probably wouldn't buy this again, but if it looks vintage like this, look at this little guy. He has posable ears, and it looks like somebody had them in the 1960s or 70s. We buy it. Look at this little bunny. Oh my gosh, it's not even Easter yet. How much did they pay for this guy? How much did we pay for him? Two dollars. There is no... No, how much did he sell for it? Oh. There's no branding at all. Uh, I'll have to check. So, I think this came in a junk bag. I would not buy this on its own without branding. That is for sure. He sold for $15. Okay. I think we were like, perfect. Let's get him out. This is one of the things we bought very early in our plush career. Okay? <laughs> we have a plush career? We have a career. About wow. it. I wonder if I should snip this. But I can't find those little scissors. There you go. Let's snip this little thread. Snip it. Who cool. bought this? Um... Very, very strange. Somebody named Colby. All right, Colby. It's all <laughs> yours. Let me put his little... <laughs> and I've realized that there's not really a need to wrap a plush animal in bubble wrap. But 
there is if there is something on it that could break off, like a plastic nose or a yeah, you know, or the eyes like if they could shatter or something like that. I'm gonna tape that here. Let's just put a little tape on it so in case it comes in roll. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, friend. Going on a trip. In the park. I would not. Go. No, no. Oh, you already put the label on. Yo, I'm so frugal. I'm like, why aren't we using a USPS? This oh, is because it's Poshmark. I don't even want to spend the 10 cents I spent on this poly mailer. I'm Sorry. like, no. So that's something to take into account, I think. Next time. Yeah. When you're shipping Posh, try to use those USPS supplies. They're free. Like this one. This is a, this is a regional rate box. So, I mean, I could use a different box if I wanted to. I would use a different box and save that box because we always run out of those. You know what? You are correct. I'm on box patrol today. Uh -huh. Okay, so this one has a little tag on it with all the information. We used to write the information on little tags. Oh, I am man. not kidding you. <laughs> so there's no ticket for this. But this is where our ticket system was born. Okay, right. I'm going to go make a ticket with all this information on it. So that's another reason we started doing these tickets. Can you make sure there's not like lint on that thing? Because this is an old This one. is very, very old. Uh, let me sh see what we have going on here. This is a sport coat. It's from Lauren, Ralph Lauren. This is what the uh, label looks like right there. Um, I've stopped picking up this brand just because, I mean, it does, it does sell, but not for... This sold for 50 bucks, which is about, I think, the top that you could expect for something from Lauren, Ralph Lauren in the sport coat, sport coat world anyway. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I said, I've just, I've stopped picking them up personally because they only, they usually only sell for around 35 bucks for me. So I got lucky with this one. Lucky, two years later. <laughs> yeah, or three even. <laughs> Yeah, it might be three years old. Okay, so I made a ticket for it. Okay. And this ticket is what we put on the outside of the package to know what's inside of the package. The ticket gets used three times, okay? These are important. Got a little bit of a, a little bit of an issue here. Okay. Oh, come on. There so we go. Dan ships sport coats inside out. I don't know if he mentioned that. Yeah, it's something that <clears throat> I actually learned on YouTube, somebody, somebody on YouTube said you flip them inside out and fold them that way. It helps to reduce the wrinkles. Okay, leave as much, this is an Amy thing, leave as much as you possibly can of an extra so people don't cut the garment. No, 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 no. less, less, less. Scott. I just, he really I'm trying. See, so you need enough to get a pair of scissors in there. You see what I mean? I do. You don't yeah. want to like. No, no, I get it. I get it. I just didn't, okay, like, I got it. The internet is going to have, like, angry Kate Gosselin memes about me, I feel. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Now, why, why did I do that? I'm going to print out a new label <laughs> and put that on the box like I was supposed to. Do you want me to take it off? Huh? It'll no, come off. just stick it in there. It doesn't matter. It's because you're nervous. You're on camera. Right? You on candy camera. Trying to be better, trying to... Be best. I'm trying to remember to talk about the stuff before I put it, before I pack it up. Pack it up, pack it in. Exactly right. So normally we would tape this onto the box, but this is Poshmark, so we already have the label. Yep. So we have these two labels that we will put in with our pick list at the end. That's how I do my bookkeeping. So very, very special saying that. Yes. <clears throat> All right. First thing, this Able Trifold Wallet. So I would call this a Bolo brand because it sold would. super fast. And we, we just sold, if you watch our What's Sold videos, we just sold a... Bring it in here. Very nice. Okay. We're good. Okay. This was from the bin, so it probably cost less than a dollar. It is kind of thrashed. If you see, there's like a water stain on it. So we did take a pretty low offer, but it was so quick. We took the conversion. We were like, yes. Yeah. We and paid no money. 74 cents, which is basically, you're right, no money. Able, local plus global, and they're handmade in Ethiopia. We sold a bucket bag overnight the last time we listed one from the Goodwill for good money. And then this time for 16 that, plus shipping. Will that fit in there? Yes, but it needs some protection. Some additional, because yeah. these padded envelopes are no good. We need those 
things from the garage. It must have a following. It looks, when I see Abel, it looks like Hobo. If you know that brand, it looks similar. Although this sells way better than Hobo. <laughs> way faster, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where they sell this. I guess I should just do some research, but we found it twice in the last couple weeks. That's good. And it was even worse looking. And then I used some Dr. Martin Wonder Balsam on them. Okay, okay. And it gave it, it was a little thirsty, you know? <laughs> it still got the patina, but it looks a little bit better. I didn't spend a long time because I knew it wasn't going to sell for much. Okay, where'd that ticket? So the ticket is on here. Now we know what's in it. And this weighs... Four five. and a half ounces. Yeah. So we round up to five. Five ounces. And then I put this on the floor. <laughs> Perfect. Next. Are these going to have to go priority? One yep. pound, three ounces. Yep. Okay, so these are a pair of Levi's 514s. And the... the you know, 514s, 520s, whatever. The number matters. 501. Right. People have their fit and they love it. These are, they have a little stretch in them and they're regular fit. So do your due diligence when you're doing research. They're just regular old Levi's. But what I can tell you is that they will sell. These sold for, um, and some of the numbers sell for more than others. The 540s go for a good amount. These sold for 26 plus uh, $9 shipping. Okay. And the, the most economical way we found to ship jeans is just like this in a paper flat rate envelope. You gotta roll it. It doesn't look pretty, but hey. It does not. It doesn't look pretty. But that's not the point. Truth. <laughs> So then I write on here, flat rate envelope, so Dan knows to put that in, put a little piece of tape on here, tape it so we know it's in the box. There you go. Next up is, oh, Brooks Brothers Silk, what is this, sweater? St. Andrews. Very nice. Right, so hey. this is a vest, a sweater vest. I'm not going to undo the whole thing, but I do want to get the label. St. Andrews is, is oh, a really, really, really nice. famous golf course. Your girl knows a lot about golf. I don't know. It's weird. There you go. Is that? Can you see if that's showing up? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So Brooks Brothers as well. And um, the St. Andrews helped it a lot. Because that's a really famous golf course. And this sold for... Come on, yeah? All right, there we go. That can go first class. This sold for $49.95 plus shipping. Perfect. No? I mean, I wish we had a bubble. I wish we had these. Padded? Padded. Would you want me to like put a little bit of bubble around it? I mean, I just don't want, what if something like fell on it and it ripped? I think worst case scenario. <laughs> and the guy paid 50 bucks for it. It's like, mm. yeah. but we don't want to go over the first class. Right. But we always ship clothing in polymers. Yeah, you're right. At least those are thick. Yeah. They're polymers. Yeah, they're good ones. And I'll leave a space at the top for you. Thank you. Do you guys know what I mean when there I'm go. harping on about this? Like, <laughs> see how this has, like, a flap at the top? So, like, if you were using scissors, sometimes Dan used to, and I did too, we would do it really tight so that you couldn't get scissors in there. But now... You can cut it open without cutting the garnet. Okay. I'm, I'm okay. 14 ounces on this guy. Thank you. 14 ounces for that guy. And let's see, are these jeans first classable? No. no. Oh. Oh, so close. <laughs> um, if you ever have any issues getting jeans or something thicker to fit into one of these, what you want to do is you want to just kind of flatten the bottom out a little bit, like so. And just kind of bend the corner, you know, bend the ends into like little triangles. And you can even bend them over if you want to like that. It kind of turns it more into a, like a box shape. Okay. Oh. Don't grab. Grabby grab. 
<laughs> that claw. Okay. <laughs> these are citizens of humanity. The internet will tell you that these don't sell. It depends on, like anything else, it depends on the style. These are the Fleetwood Crop High Rise Flare Stretch Jeans. That is a lot of descriptors. I know <laughs> that these are good jeans because they're high rise and that's in. They're flare and that's in. And the crop on citizens are for short people like me because it's what I wear. So I know <laughs> how much these jeans go for. You can see the logo. It's just regular all. Yeah, come a little closer. It's just regular citizens. There you go. So pay attention to your styles. I don't listen to people that say this blank doesn't sell. We paid what? Those are at Goodwill. So nine bucks for these. Paid nine dollars and they sold for fifty nine ninety five plus See? nine dollars shipping. There you go. So that's what I'm trying to say. Like, you know, you got to look at the style. You got to comp it. And I'm not saying comp every single pair of jeans, but you get some in your head and you're like, oh, I know those. Or you get some like features, you see their high rise and flare, you're like, oh, I better check those. That kind of thing. And keeping up with fashion trends is part of your job if you sell clothes. There you go. Okay, that's another flat rate envelope. Let's get these labels printed out. We have six things waiting for payment on eBay. Oh my goodness. For over a thousand dollars. It's really lame. That is pretty lame. <clears throat> for, for me, I thought that they were going to make it so that if you sent an offer, you had to pay right then. And all of the ones in the, in the bank are offers. And I took the offer and then they sit there. Yeah, well, that, I thought What's that, up was, with that? that was supposed to be implemented at the start of the year, I thought. I thought so too. Also, I would like to thank you all for your recommendations on boxes. Yes. We went to the pet store, some people, and we went to the Dollar Tree, and they told us certain days to come back and when to go back. Your suggestions have been so helpful, with the with the exception of dumpster diving, because <laughs> I can just imagine Dan catapulting me into the dumpster, and then <laughs> four foot eleven of me, no, what am I, four foot ten of me, not being able to climb out, and having to call for help. That would be bad. Yes. I'm not above it, though. I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> but thank you so much. I love the chat that's been happening in the comments recently. It's great. Yes. Great, great, great. Leave comments. Leave the comments. It's so helpful because everybody learns from them. All right, first, Levi's 514s. Okay, the Brooks Brothers. I think we should wrap this up over at my side, okay. showing the people how I enter the bookkeeping. Great idea. We'll come at, we're going full circle today. Full circle. Uh, the Citizens of Humanity jeans. And the Able Wallet. This little baby stack. Oh, we got the two posh marks down there. All right, can you hand me that pen that's right over there? There you go. Thank you. So what Dan is doing right now is writing down the shipping costs on the pick list. Again, this is just the process that we've figured out works fastest and best for us um and we do bookkeeping every day and that to us is so important because we sell on five different platforms so taking stuff down each day is incredibly crucial. important yeah because we've run into that issue where we've sold something on on poshmark or on ebay and then the same thing sells on a different platform within a few you know just within a couple of hours and that's that's no that's always fun to try to explain. Ah, oh, I already sold this to somebody else. Sorry. So, all right, we're going to go back over to the bookkeeping side. Action. Okay, so I have filled out the shipping prices from the... I'm not going to show you the pick list because it has people's addresses, but I filled out what we paid for shipping on each of these tickets. Okay? Okay. These are the four eBay. I'm going to go to eBay and go to my eBay selling... And then I go to payments and all transactions. 
So I'm looking for the Able wallet and it's right here. And it tells me what it sold for. So it sold for $24.99, so I'm filling that in $24.99. That's including shipping. That's what the buyer paid to us. Okay. And then it says in red, it'll have your fees. And if there's a promoted fee right above it or below it, it'll be another red fee and we'll add those together. Okay. But here, this didn't sell promoted. It just sold, meaning someone just searched for it and I love it. Yes. Three forty six dollars is the fees. Okay. And then it sold on Jan 12. One, 12, two, two. Done. Then Citizens of Humanity, this did sell promoted. It sold 10 10 plus 60 cents. So that's 10 70 as fees. Oof. Ooh. <laughs> and I'm not adding tax in. If I if we did pay tax, I would add in our 8.25% for Texas sales tax, but we didn't pay tax because we have a reseller permit. Right. Uh, these sold for $68.94 all in. Okay. And the sell date was the 12th. Okay. St. Andrews, Brooks Brothers, $58.94 all in. Sell date one. 12.22 and the fees on that were 7.20. Okay, and then these Levi's 514s. Where are you at? 34.99 all in. And the 64, I mean 468 and 26 cents. 494 fees. So that had a promoted listing attached to it. So I just added the fees together. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do, we're gonna hop on over to Vendu. All right, Vendu. And we'd use Vendu. I'm gonna zoom in here and refocus. Give me one second. Okay, go right ahead. This Versace plate is coming back. Ugh. Yeah, because somebody doesn't understand what seven inches means. <laughs> okay, uh, Able. So that's the bag we sold. So I'm gonna go to Active and find this wallet right here. I didn't even get to cross list it. So I go to eBay listed and I go to Marcus sold and I'm gonna put in all this information. It's all in the same way on the ticket. Cost of item was 74 cents. Marketplace fees were 346. Shipping for us was 387. Marcus sold. And then I look right here and it tells me our profit. So we oh, made awesome. 1692 on that. Right, and this right here is the reason why we keep track of individual item prices mm -hmm. on the tickets as well as why we uh, include shipping cost in the price of the sale okay so these, that we can account for it here now these citizens humanity i may have had many many pairs but i look at our inventory number which is on the ticket 3440 and i compare it 3440 so it's right here i go to ebay marcus sold and then i the price we sold it for all in was 68.94 the cost of the item was $8.99. The marketplace fees was $10.70. And the shipping for us was $7.52. Marcus sold, and then I write the profit, which was $41.73. Very nice. And see, I, I use my my you know critical thinking here. I'm like, oh, that's a good one to pick up in my head. Right. Just writing the profit down. It helps to get it in my head. So many times, like you can think something's a good profit, and then you see the number in writing, and you're like, whoa. Don't get that again. Brooks Brothers, Saint. Uh oh. This didn't make it in. Uh, it may have. You may just not have the word Saint in there. Let's see how the vest. There it is. Oh, ST. Okay. Marcus sold. All in. We sold this for $58.94. Cost of the item was $449. Our marketplace fees were seven twenty, and the shipping was five ninety six. We made forty one twenty nine on that. Great sale. And finally, the Levi's five fourteens. And so, I mean, the other thing that we haven't said about Vendu is, if any of these things were cross-listed on other sites once you mark it sold on ebay it will automatically delist it from all the other platforms it's active on right. so that's why we do this right after they sell so that it eliminates the possibility of something selling on another platform we got these for free so cost of item was zero. Oh, i love free inventory um 22.53 on those 
profit. Okay, and if we want to, I didn't do the Poshmark, but Poshmark's, it, when I open the screen, you'll see it at people's addresses. So I'll do those off camera. But then at the end, if you wanna go see what you sold for the day, you can go to analytics, and then instead of year to date, you can just go to day. And you can see the four items I included, we had a total revenue of 187 and a total profit of 122 on just those four items. Not bad, that's our a really average, good ratio. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> So our average sale price was forty six ninety seven, and you can kind of just see where you're at for the day. Right. That's really helpful too. Yeah, that's great. All right, I will see you guys later. I think Dan's gonna go to the post office, and you're gonna have your moment with Mojo. Yes. Bye. Here's everybody's favorite moment with Mojo. He's a sleepy guy today. All right, you guys. I am back from the post office. I've dropped off all of our stuff. And Amy's getting ready for the listing tonight. Woo! Our goal is to try to, because we have some clothes left that we need to list before we can go sourcing again. So I'm going to try to list like 10 and 10 or 15 and 5, meaning that I have 10 or 15 hard goods ready to go, drafted with tickets. Yep. And then on our live list tonight, we will list those and take photos quickly in the photo box and then list five clothes pieces that will be ready and steamed and ticketed that we can then use the mannequin for. Yes, fun times, fun times. So we're gonna try to break it up. I think that <clears> works better for us. We were trying to do 20 clothes and it's like, it's too much. Yeah, we did 20 shoes one time Whoa. and no, doesn't, no. <laughs> so if you're having trouble getting listings done, I think that's a really good option is to try splitting it up. That's right. Uh, and you, if you want to see exactly how we do it, there's a link down below to our Facebook group and we'll be live there tonight. And every weeknight. Yeah, at 7, somewhere between 7 and, and 7.20 <laughs> p.m. Central Time. <laughs> we try. It's a long day. It is. And uh, I think there's like 250 people in the oh. group now. So it's a party over there. It's we have fun. a good time. So thank you guys for hanging out and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.